I feel like we've done this before. I feel like I feel we've like done, we've this, done this, before. this before. Reboot from Asteroid G. You're listening to Not So Live from Asteroid G. I'm Mike Finkelstein. With me, as always, is... Josh Truffle Shuffle Schaefer. And... Queen B. I'm not going to do a special name. <laughs> I was going to be one-eyed Willie, but I thought that might be too on the nose. <laughs> Somebody is already using that, Josh. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> dick. <laughs> um. Anyway, we are we are re- talking today about the goodies. We are actually going to be doing a reboot cast for it. But before we get there, I kind of felt like it, we owed it, since we've never really discussed it on the website before, to go over the goonies. Uh pretty much for like an entire generation like they're fun kids can do anything kind of adventure film that inspired a number of other ones and i honestly think has kind of crafted its own little sub genre of movies um yeah yeah and you know it has had repeated attempts to create some sort of abortive sequel that's never happened the best sequel we've gotten was like a konami game that everyone thought was a sequel but was actually a sequel to a konami game instead was it Yeah, The Goonies 2 for the NES is actually a sequel to The Goonies for the Famicom. Not for the Famicom, for for the uh, MSX. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. All right, then. So, yeah, and that one is actually somehow like a semi-sequel to the movie. So we're actually like three removed. It's dumb. Anyway, no one cares. (sighs) The Goonies. That's true. No one cares. The Goonies is, okay, let's be honest. The Goonies isn't a good movie. It's okay. It, it's one of those nostalgic things where, you know, it, when I was a kid, I liked it, but now it's kind of like, eh. Yeah. When I was a kid, I loved the shit out of that movie. And I was like, it's so epic and fun. And then I go back and I watch it now and I'm like, they spend 45 minutes hanging around at this abandoned place or trying to set up the plot of the movie. Then they fall into a hole, like do two things and suddenly they find a pirate ship and you're sitting there going, how did no one else find this fucking pirate ship? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it wasn't even all that well hidden. <laughs> and no one goes back for... Well, I guess they did go back to the money. Never mind. Oh, they try... No, they, they, the, 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 the gemstones are stored in the marbles bag, and somehow the Italian, like, thieves never get a hold of that. But they don't go back for the money because the pirate ship sails off into the sunset. Didn't they use the money, though, for the uh, to pay off the town or whatever? In theory, that's what's supposed to happen. Although, as people have pointed out online, they'd never be allowed to get away with that because those gems were historical artifacts and would have immediately been seized by the federal government. But the federal government would have paid them a finder's fee of some kind. Of some kind. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, yep. yeah. It, and maybe they'd get uh, paid for the finder's fee of the pirate ship as well. Who knows? It's, it, yeah. Anyway, so... It's a dumb movie, but when you're eight, it's a fun movie. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I would grant that. Okay. Yeah. It, but it's it it's really just about a bunch of kids who go off on a adventure, meet some comically stupid villains, do like the bare minimum adventure steps, and then yay treasure! Like it's a, it's a kid's wish fulfillment fantasy, basically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's like uh, you know, kids. Kids matter. All kids matter type of thing. Oh. Yes. Not in this political climate. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it also kind of jump-started the careers of like Sean Astin, Josh Brolin. Oh my god, there's uh, so many stars in there. Corey Feldman, yeah. Joey Pants. <laughs> I mean, Feldman hasn't had much of a career since the other uh, Corey like, got hooked on drugs. and Corey the Hart. Yeah, Corey Haim. Corey, 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 Corey Hart saying about wearing sunglasses at night. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, whatever. But he did wear them, and it, credit to him, he wore the shit out of them. Okay, he did. He did. <laughs> so you have Jeff Cohen, who would play Chunk, who is not mm-hmm. chunky anymore, by the way. No, but he will still do the truffle shuffle for his alma mater. That's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Martha Plimpton was in this movie. Um, K. Hu Kwan, he was the kid who played the Asian kid. Data. Data. There it was. I wanted to call him Gizmo. I'm like, that's a different movie. That was, that was the character's name. That was, was the Data. character's name before Star Trek came oh, out. Oh, okay. It, that same kid was in uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, too. 
Yeah, yeah. at a short round. He, he is, was also in X Men in two thousand. No time for love, Doctor Jones. Was he really in X Men? Yes, he was. Who did he play? No time for love, <laughs> Professor X. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I go to the page and then he disappears off the page. <laughs> That's not useful, IMDb. Because he was additional crew. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so he worked on the film. He worked. He was he was background. Poor token. <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> so, but no, the movie is the movie is dumb. The movie is fun. The movie is dumb. And it's the thing of like it's become a cult classic. I don't know how much it made, honestly, officially, but it's at least become a cult classic among kids of a certain age because it was played constantly on HBO and Disney mm-hmm. Plus and before it was Disney Plus or whatever else you had. Um, That's always on cable. And we all learned to love that movie. And so they've been wanting for like 30 fucking years at this point to make a sequel. And I have to admit... I honestly, like, we can reboot the hell out of it or do whatever we want, but for legitimately, I don't see how you make a sequel to that movie. I mean, it would have to be, like, the way that uh, Ghostbusters is going. Like, the original kids' is, uh, kids or grandkids or what have you. So it would just be a generational thing. And they just somehow managed to find the, the pirate ship again? pirate ship. <laughs> One Eye Willie's, like, pirate's yacht. Yeah. <laughs> it, it'd be like... It'd be like the, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think, just a random, like, English sailor's ship that recovered a bunch of pirate doubloons or something. The Goonies okay, and well, the Quest for yeah, the Holy Grail. No, you have a good point. So if we're going to reboot this, yes. let's reboot it as maybe based in England rather than America. Hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, but like, we... we if you're going to reboot it, you have to take into account the other movies that have come out since then that kind of play in the same ballpark. There was what? There was the River Phoenix fi- sci-fi film, The Explorers. There was um, the Ice Monst- Pirates. Huh? Ice, Ice No. I love Ice Pirates, but it's not the same genre. No, it's not the same genre. I just wanted to say Ice Pirates. You just want to say Ice Pirates. I know. Um, the Monster Squad, which is like this movie, but with Universal Monsters. Uh, m- yeah. way way more recently we had uh, Vampires vs. the Bronx which is like oh, oh, yeah. did, did you, great. you guys great have seen film. that movie? yes it was a great oh. film <laughs> well, it was Josh, awesome did you watch it? Well, yeah I, did not, like I, I, don't sh- I don't share those sentiment, sentiments. <laughs> God, that movie was so much- I love when he like writes up and is like you guys need to like not go to the party or whatever because bad things will happen they're like yo that was mad vague dog <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, 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 I saw Fast Times. So I didn't need to see a sequel. Oh, come on. That movie was so good. <laughs> I watched it years ago, though, so, I mean... Vampires vs. the Bronx? Oh, no. I thought you were talking about something else. Vamp- I was going to say, Vampires vs. the Bronx just came out, dude. I haven't seen that yet. Okay. What did you think we were talking about? I thought you were talking about... Uh... Okay, so another movie like The Goonies <laughs> is like E.T., except it has aliens involved. And didn't it technically so... come out beforehand? Did it? I think so. so. really what we're saying is The Goonies is an E.T. genre, which might make sense because I think Steven Spielberg served as an executive producer on The Goonies. Yeah, he it's... did. It was by Amblin. Yeah, it's it's the it's the Steven Spielberg genre. You get some kids yeah, together yeah. for an adventure. Uh, Not 8mm, that was a film about snuff. Um, God, what was that movie? <laughs> um, something eight. Yeah, Super Eight. Yeah. Super Eight. Thank you. Super the movie's eight, yeah. so memorable, none of us can remember it. Um, <laughs> I like that movie. <laughs> but no, it's it, it's you get a bunch of kids together for an adventure, uh, where they have to go off on their own and save the day, and you're basically in Spielberg land. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's what it is. So I mean, even films like The Iron Giant can kind of fit into that genre as well. Yeah, I mean, you had a whole bunch. Like, you had uh, Willow kind of was like that, sort of. See, you're a Willow fan, and I am not a Willow fan at all. I think it's okay. I mean, how many people are actually Willow fans? Josh. Oh, dude. That's very accusatory. How how can you (laughs) accuse someone of that? That's just... (laughs) 
I do, so, although I do like Val Kilmer quite a bit. <laughs> I I don't like Willow too much. Yeah. Okay. So, but but if you rebooted Willow, you could have Peter. No, if you're gonna reboot, okay, we're oh. getting off topic here. But if you're gonna reboot Willow, you keep Val Kilmer and you make him play Doc Holliday. Okay. Obviously. Yeah, that would be a I fantastic. I'm just gonna make it be uh, like an opposite instead of having um, have More Peter ridiculous. Dinklage play uh, Val Kilmer's part. And then find a puppet to play the dwarf part. No, I think I think you just keep Val Kilmer, but you make him play it as Doc Holliday, <laughs> <laughs> which is undoubtedly his best acting chops ever. Yes, yes. like that. The second he leaves the film at the like the back half of that movie, we're talking about Tombstone now. We are way off the Goonies. Okay, let's let's refocus. <laughs> <laughs> we are meandering here. So. No, but if you're going to do this, you have to pay attention to the movies that have come out in the genre. So whatever you do, you need to think about how is this going to play? Is this this rebooted Goonies going to feel too much like Vampires vs. the Bronx or the Monster Squad or the Explorers or E.T.? So you want to set it in England. Yes. I Well, I think it would be different. Well, you're more likely to get a group of different... Not all white kids and an Asian. Um, you're going to be um, more likely to get a, a a hodgepodge of different characters. They're not all going to be white. I, you know me. I like to put color into everything. So I would say if you're going to reboot this, reboot it with a colorful cast. Um, and maybe not all boys. Put some girls, a lot more girls in there. Maybe flip it up. Have only two boys and the rest be girls. I mean, I'm okay with that. that the, the, the fact is, at this point, that we're in... Hopefully, especially with the Biden presidency that we're we're all hoping for right now as we record this before it's quite quite official with all the recounts. Um like we're in, we're in we're in a state now where ki- like kids don't need to be male or female. There can be non-binary represented as well even among kids and preteens because Absolutely. it happens in that age too mm-hmm. and we just need to we need to be accepting of that. And we don't need to identify them among any one specific race. I mean, if you watched Vampires vs. the Bronx, you had, like, the black kids and you had the Hispanic kids, and that's if you want to group them. But, I mean, they showed all kinds of different variety among them. Because you had, like, the traditional black kid and, the like, the, the gang. But then you had, like, the two different types of Hispanic kids from different cultures. And you had the, the black girl in the group who was actually Haitian. And that's a completely different culture as well. So it's, like, it's just showing, like, the the breadth of these cultures that can be represented. So like, I think it's better if you take that nuanced view that I vampires versus the Bronx did and show like a collection of people and allow their characters to be more than just say white or black or token Asian, like short round. Sorry, kid. Um, you know, like that, like to, to just let the casting be natural and nuanced and maybe take some of the, what the kids bring from their own personal life into it. When you, like let the characters become who they are like the dialogue and so forth can remain the way it is but maybe let their character background be defined by the actors i a hundred percent and i think um like some of the upcoming popular actors right now are from stranger things Mm -hmm. which are kind of it's kind of steven spielberg-esque yeah it is just without it and that's that's in the genre as well exactly um, Millie Bobby Brown, yeah. very popular right now. I think she would be a good addition to that. Um, Maisie Williams, I mean, she is now in her 20s, but she could play somebody younger because she's so tiny. She, she um, is tiny, it's true. I mean, by that regard, though, Tom Holland. I mean, <laughs> that, that guy is right, going to look yeah. 12 for the rest when, of his life. <laughs> yeah. When I saw that he was over 20, I nearly should have break. Okay, hold on. Here's one, and this is from um, The Queen's Gambit. So the actors... There, Thomas Brody Sangster, who was in Love Actually, like the little kid who learns to play the drums in that, even though I hate that oh, movie. Yeah. Who, oh, plays, yeah. who plays the uh, the chess... Chess genius that's go- yeah, up against the right. uh, uh, Anna Taylor-Joyce chess genius in The Queen's Gambit. That dude right. looks 12. Like, he Still. has... Yeah, he has a mustache and beard in the movie that makes it look like it was painted on with Sharpie, okay? <laughs> like, he cannot grow <laughs> facial hair. But that dude is like 30. And you're sitting there going, dude, you still look 12, okay? You could be in the yep. Goonies now. Yep. <laughs> like, yep. even right now, you could be in the Goonies. Oh, my God. 
So hey, it just means he's going to age well. That's all he, that means. He, he he will be the next generation's Paul Rudd. Is basically what it is. When he actually hits sixty, he's going to finally look like he's thirty. How about how about this? How about Goonies Paul Rudd? Is, nope. <laughs> right. <laughs> Paul Rudd is there. Um, I, well, I was going to bring in another favorite actor. I was going to say the kids accidentally end up killing John Wick's dog. Oh, and then Keanu Reese has to come and like hunt them all down. I, I, you exactly. know, at that point, That'd at, be great. At that point, I'm I'm putting the odds on uh, Paul, uh, Keanu Reeves at that point. Like, the kids right? are dead. Exactly. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but anyway, if we're being honest, so British set movie with a nice, diverse cast, what's your plot line? Well, the reason I wanted to go England, no, 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 the reason I wanted to go England is because you have a lot of history there. So you might not go for a pirate ship, but you might be able to go for, like, an underground um well, yeah, World a treasury, kind of or situation. I mean, even if you wanted to still go the pirate ship route to keep some of the beats the same, just by the very fact of privateers being in like integral to the British uh, colonial era, like right. the One-Eyed Willie isn't even going to be a pirate at that point. He would more than likely have been a privateer. Whether or not he went rogue and tried to run off with the Empire's money is another matter altogether. But... You could also do Australia as well. It doesn't have to be England. It could be Australia because you could get more... Giant spiders? <laughs> and giant spiders. Yeah. New like, Zealand. Yeah, Whatever. no, that would be a fucking scary movie is uh, the that they, they fall into a hole and realize they fall into one of the pit spider things. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> end of movie yeah they all dead sorry all guys <laughs> i mean i know the deleted scenes of the original movie had a kraken in them but jesus you're taking it too far there <laughs> shit <laughs> i just want to see children get eaten apparently fuck <laughs> holy crap <laughs> I'm the only person who's driving down the road and i see ver various children of various ages playing and i go "Ooh, that one's fat <laughs> That'd be good right there. <laughs> wow. Josh, what's your idea for a Goonies movie? I don't know. Um, you, did, you said you had ideas. I do have ideas, but I think the plot would largely be the same. I'm not a big fan of the pirate ship, but okay. you'd still have to have some sort of uh, fantastical legend attached to it, and I think pirates yes. are the easiest. National treasure, um, but for kids. Yeah, yeah. I mean... National Treasure was was pretty much Goonies too. Um, <laughs> Goonies, but with adults. Yeah. 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 But, um, you know, modernize it a bit. Uh, I don't, I don't think it needs to be stuck in the eighties because, you know, I I remember part of the eighties and I wasn't a fan. So, <laughs> but I mean, um, I mean, if you you could set it in like the nineteen fifties and it would have a very it vibe. Yeah, I mean that'd be fine too. But I kind of. Like, I think it's in order to for it to achieve, uh, I guess, uh, money. Yeah. Um, the best thing to do is put it in the 90s. So you'd have all the millennial kid mm -hmm. or parents, mm -hmm. I guess, go see it. But yeah. um, or mod just modern day. But um, I think it's uh, it, you couldn't modernize it too much because kids just don't kind of go out and just roam like they used to. Well, instead, like... of, instead of your, your basic thieves, which is basically what those guys were, you know, they're, they're what basic bank robbers. Uh -huh. yeah. You'd probably have a lot of, you'd probably have cartel or yeah. um, some bigger, a bigger fish I think would be a better villain. I mean, yeah. the, the other way to do it is not try and court the, um, that whole nostalgia aspect. I mean, you could go, a completely different route and just set it way far in the past, like late 1800s and have like kids in a border town get pitch wind of like the hall from maybe like a train robbery or something hidden in the mountains or something like that from like decades earlier, even like there are routes mm -hmm. you could take that would, uh, that would still feel like Goonies while explaining away the dumbness of the pirate ship somehow hidden in a cove that no one's found, even though it's really fucking easy to find it. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I like the idea. I like the idea of changing the decade because, yeah, the eighties, eighties doesn't need to be th here. But I think you're, uh, I think you are right. You either court the nostalgia of like the nineties and the two thousands, or you update it to, you know, or or you set it back further, like the twenties mm -hmm. or the eighty, the eighteen eighties or something. Yeah, and you can have it 
generational. And as far as casting goes, um, Tom Cruise has to be sloth. Oh my God. <laughs> so, you know, he has proven he will do things under deep makeup. No, and that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. The first time I saw Tropic Thunder, my dumbass didn't realize that was Tom Cruise the entire movie <laughs> until the credits. So, like, he's put him in a shit ton of makeup. I just want him to do the, hey, you guys, and then that's it. <laughs> and then I think you have to cast Peter Dinklage as the lead of the criminal group that's trying to, like, you, go after no him. No joke. Yeah. That was literally what I was about to say. Yep. And... Yeah, well, because you know he would relish playing a villain, especially if he got to put on this, like, bad Western drawl the whole time. Oh. Yeah. Like, oh, I mean, I was, set, it, definitely do that. set it in the 2000s, still Russian give him a Western mafia. draw, huh? I was thinking Russian mafia. I just wanted to hear him <laughs> have like, a thick <laughs> Russian accent. <laughs> but just like, and I want the, like, I didn't like the bumbling criminals in yeah, the Goonies. No. I think that tropes no. a little too much. I want him to be, like, Ruthless. cold and calculating yeah. and yeah. kidnap a kid or two. Yeah. Like, just then, beat the shit out of someone. Like, but But here's what you do. Let just just like put a capper on that. You make him Russian, and you have this whole adventure, and then he gets defeated by the kids and like turns tail and runs. And then end of the movie, mid credit sequence, John Wick shows up, <laughs> <laughs> and it's all in the same universe. That's how you bring John Wick in. Yeah, nice. yeah. Idris Elba can be one of the parents. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> yeah, just have him do his his uh his uh South London accent that he does for Luther. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, he's so really Bobby Brown's dad. Uh, there you so go. Good. So good. I mean, they've both been on Netflix recently for shows. I'm sure they could both be contracted for it if Netflix it, picks up this show. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that'd be so good. I want <laughs> Haley Joel Osment in it too for some reason. <laughs> you know, he, he does play a fairly good villain. Um, yeah. Did you guys see, what was that movie? He's in a movie recently that, it, well, it's, a, it's like a, it was a series and it had like three seasons, I think. Future Man. That's what it was called. Oh, really? Um, yes. Haley Osmond is in there, and he's he's essentially the bad guy. So okay. he, he actually plays a pretty good bad guy. Okay. He was also in uh, my f- current favorite television program, What We Do in the Shadows. Yes, he was. Yes. He always kinds of played the same, like, weird Weasley character now. Like, that little kid from, like, The Sixth Sense and so forth that everyone's like, he's going to be an Academy Award winning kid guy and, like, have this long career. No, he's, like, he plays the weirdest stock characters now. Which is amazing. It is. Yeah, I mean, he made, he probably made so much bank back in the day he doesn't care, so he just does whatever he wants. But it's mm-hmm. really weird all the same. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've never seen him in anything where I'm like, oh, that was a shit performance. No, he's always good, even if he's like this really strange dude. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm trying to think what my, like, reboot or whatever would be. And I'm stuck on the idea of trying to do, like, a proper sequel. And how it would actually work. And I'm, honestly, for once, I'm struggling. Because... Well, if you're going to do a proper sequel, you'd have to bring all the kids back as parents. And then you'd have a new kids. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. You do that for all the ones that you can get back. Not all of them are going to sign on, obviously. Um, and I like it, but you got to figure out. Like, I, I have this. Like, I almost feel like you have to mix in some mystical shit to it, just because. Like, otherwise, it's just going to be them on a treasure hunt once again, which feels really boring. So, like, maybe the treasure from One Eyed Willie was cursed, and after all this time, now that. Um, Fucking Sean Astin. Now that Sean Astin, his character, whatever his name was, Mikey? Mikey. Mikey, Mikey, Now that Mikey is, like, around the same age that One-Eyed Willie was when One-Eyed Willie died because of the mutiny on his ship or whatever, suddenly there's, like, this soul bond between them, and they have to go find, like, One-Eyed Willie's true hidden stash of the rest of the treasure to cure him of it as before, like, he, like, loses his soul to One-Eyed Willie. I don't know. It's weird. But... It's the best I, I can come know. up with. You can have Corey Feldman's uh, character be a Spanish teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think if you do that, you have to have him play it like uh, what the Miss Senior Chang, just like yeah. the worst, the worst Spanish <laughs> teacher ever. Exactly, that's yeah. the whole point. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. and then every time he finishes class, he moonwalks out of class. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because, I yeah, I agree. <sighs> the Goonies. Oh, those movies. That movie. That one. It was only one movie. I don't even know why I'm saying that. 
Uh, just, well, we talked about doing a second one for such a long time, did, and then right? yeah. they just never did. They never did, and I think that's for the best, honestly. Yeah, it's like if Beetlejuice had that sequel. <laughs> Goonies, go Hawaiian! <laughs> I mean, that makes as much sense for finding a privateer ship as anything, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, but I I do I do agree that it it can't be another pirate ship, or if no. it's going to be tied to the pirate ship, it has to be something completely different. You know, in all honesty, the best way to do a Goonies continuation, I think, is you go the Beetlejuice route without the issues that the cartoon show brings up. You just make it a cartoon, and then that way they can just have whatever random adventures they want, and it makes way more sense in the context of their weird fucked up town. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's there's a there was a pirate ship under here. You know what else is here? The 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 lost treasure of the Knights Templar. You know what else is buried here? A vampire. You know, like you just <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they fall into a crevasse and suddenly they're in Jules Verne's journey to the center of the earth. Like that makes on a cartoon that makes way more sense for the Goonies than anything you do live action. I think you'd start asking questions about this town and is it also the gateway to hell? Yeah, and then Buffy shows up, and it's a hell mouth. I mean, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's perfectly fine. The I mean, for, show up, it'd be fine, too. Yeah, you, you may, like, basically, the show I'm imagining is, like, Erie, Indiana, that, like, what, one or two season show that aired during Saturday mornings back in the day, and was basically Goonies, but mixed with the X-Files. Like, that kind of thing. But again, they've already made that. So, I don't know. I think the Goonies needs to remain the Goonies and just not come back. Not come back? Not come back, no. I think for once we've hit upon something that Hollywood shouldn't reboot. It's of a moment, and I don't know that you can do it again. Lightning in a bottle, for sure. Yeah, it is. It is. That's hey. okay. I could go the rest of my life never ever watching it again. It would be great. <laughs> so what you're saying is next next week, podcast, <laughs> watch party, The Goonies. <laughs> no. <laughs> Josh, you heard it. Let's put it on the books. Deal. <laughs> All right, this has been a kind of a reboot, I guess, uh, from Not So Live from Asteroid G. I am Mike Finkelstein. I'm a Truffle Shuffle. <laughs> I don't think that's what you said before. It was. He said he was Josh Truffle, Truffle Shuffle Schaefer. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Queen Bee. And we will see you next time. <laughs>